JJ, could a trade actually happen or is every single bit of this smoke? Now, I know it's very easy to fall victim to a bunch of the the rumors that circulate news wires when when we get into the NFL draft and combine and that period of time is called smoke season for a reason, but we're going to break down some of the information and speculate as to whether we think some of the rumors could end up being true or not. Let's start off with the facts or let's start off with the things that make the most sense. And that doesn't mean that it draws a a complete conclusion or closes the door on any sort of JJ deal that could happen. But this report here, uh, Vikings have no plans to trade Justin Jefferson per Diana Rossini. Okay, so this report, first of all, needs to be put in front before we go down these other rabbit holes that are purely based in smoke. Uh, Nobody's got sources. Everybody's making up stuff left and right. The only thing that I do is come in and speak to reports that are out there, sometimes to shoot them down, sometimes to say, well, I don't think it's right, but this is what I think about it. And that's what we're going to do here tonight. So let's start off with the most logical that the Vikings are like, we have no plans to trade JJ. Does that mean they won't trade him, though? No, because if the right person comes a knocking, they may make a move. It's only logical um, to potentially explore something that betters your team. Now, here's a report from a Cardinals uh, uh, page here, fan page, n- nothing of substance at all. Um, no concrete information, trade rumors, cards, eyeing Vikings, Justin Jefferson in a major move. Again, nothing Nothing we can conclude here. There's no source. Nobody gives any information. Everybody just has free reign to say whatever the hell they want. But if we break it down, we did this on the show earlier tonight. If we break it down, there is some rhyme and reason to a Cardinal. And I'm an Arizona Cardinal fan. I'm here locally, and I'm telling you, I hear nothing concrete. Just a bunch of this this stuff floating around Cardinal pages and local radio. And what if speculation But when you break it down, J.J., big fat contract in Minnesota. They're starting over. They're accumulating the 23 and 11 pick and trying to maybe get up into the three. And if the Cardinals were to say, give us J.J. for the four pick, the Vikings get to not have a big fat contract that is probably $30 million potentially. $30 million per year heading toward J.J., And this report right here, if anybody didn't know, Justin Jefferson, according to uh, Adam Schefter uh, uh, on Tuesday, ESPN, the the JJ, most recent JJ offer by the Minnesota Vikings was $30 million a year annually, and he rejected that. So let's not pretend that the Vikings or whoever takes on JJ is going to be paying, not be paying through the roof because they will be. And so when you ask a team like Minnesota, is it more valuable to have the number four a la Marvin Harrison Jr. on a cheap rookie deal starting over in unison contract wise with your rookie quarterback, whether you take him at 11 or move the 23 and 11 up to three to get Drake May or whatever. And then you get the four pick from the Cardinals, give the Cardinals JJ. Now you have number three and number four overall. You take whatever quarterback you want, not saying they'll make the right choice, and you take Marvin Harrison Jr. Now that that's one thing that we can we can look at and say that 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 makes sense. You know, that's why people kick it around. And you could say, no, JJ's worth more. He's not worth more. Because he costs three, he costs thirty million dollars plus a year. He turned down a thirty million dollar a year contract. And before anybody thinks that he can't create a mess or a, dr- a dramatic situation so much that the Vikings want to trade him away, you're not looking at this thing properly. Because this man wanted Cousins to return. Cousins did not return. The Vikings did not bring back the man that this guy wanted throwing him the football now he's going to be handed a rookie quarterback that he may or may not like and he's rejecting offers he doesn't feel pay him what he's deserving of 
And there could be a scenario where he says, trade me. I'm not going to sign this long-term deal with you. Create problems so much so. And people say, oh, players don't have leverage. They're under contract, Smitty. They don't have leverage. I, I People in my comments on the on the IUK video, there's no leverage. There's not a lot of leverage, but there is leverage in, in certain situations. It's all case by case. And in this uh, specific situation, there is leverage because if he's not going to sign this long-term deal or make it, uh, uh, put up a stink about it, then they're going to say, let's just bring in Marvin Harrison Jr. and start over. It's very, very possible he could initiate and kickstart the Vikings going down a road they say they have no plans going down. Not to mention, if this report is the most accurate report out of everything, and we got to assume it is, Okay, because we have no no uh, uh, no facts at all on these other other pieces. And let me let me throw another one up while I'm talking about it. Let me throw this report up, <laughs> and th- this one's coming from. I thought it fitting to bring in the CTESPN CTE, the play on CTE from Antonio Brown. This is Antonio Brown's network <laughs> that he just kicked into gear, and people are kind of falling victim of. Of posting a lot of his stuff and reposting it. Apparently, he had a lead on the Steelers acquiring Justin Fields, and everyone's like, maybe he's onto something. Maybe this guy is more connected than we think. And, and according to uh, uh, AB, Antonio Brown, if you don't know, uh, Antonio Brown's CTESPN network, <laughs> the Steelers are, and Vikings are still working on a Justin Jefferson trade. Both sides are working to get it done. Eyeball emoji, popcorn emoji. Um, all right, I won't leave that one up too long. I'm just trying to give you a sense of what kind of smoke we're, that I'm dealing with on a daily basis. Hey, Smitty, you see the report? Hey, Smitty, you see the report? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, this one's from Barstool. Okay, and, and this is Barstool acknowledging smoke that they're running into. Okay, Barstool reports this right here. JJ, uh, the NFL needs to make this rumored trade of J.J. to the Bengals for T. Higgins plus two first-round picks a reality uh, because it makes too much sense. And, and, and this is speculation. Somebody ran this out there in Barstool saying make this rumor a reality. But then what people do is they take it, they, they cut it up, then they report on it, and then they say, did you hear the rumor about the Bengals maybe acquiring J.J.? And then you got to hear, you know, eventually it circles around so much that the Vikings will say something like, we have no interest in trading JJ. Same thing with Ayuk. The Jaguars reportedly offered the number, reportedly offered the number 17 and Zay Jones, but then that got shot down and the Niners basically said that they did not offer such a trade. But doesn't mean that maybe some other conversation was had at some point. We don't really fully know. Um, but as I was saying, there's still a very real possibility that JJ kickstarts some sort of trade open-mindedness by the Vikings if he's if he's not showing a willingness to be a part of the rebuild, because he might be so hell bent he might not be, but he might be so hell bent on wanting Kirk Cousins that this left a bad taste in his mouth and he doesn't agree with the the process in place of rebuilding this team around a rookie quarterback. And he might want to go somewhere and play with a veteran like Kyler. He might want to go somewhere and play with a veteran like, in his mind, Russell Wilson slash Justin Fields. Who the hell knows? But I I think it's safe to say that we are in a territory where we got to dissect the news. We got to dissect the smoke. And then we got to just, it's my job to say, what if this happened? What would it do? And so that's what I do every day, all day. During smoke season is is just report on what's circulating in massive amounts of, you know, posts all over and news reports and tweets. And and I have to say my conclusion, you know, based on all this, and I don't know if there's another one that I have here. I got the Bengal one. I got the the CTE SPN network. Uh, We got we got that one I put on screen already. There's more of them. There's there's tons of them. Uh, this one right here. Oh, Steeler Nation. Here's another one. So this kind of like this kind of makes you wonder if AB's got a lead on something <laughs> because Steeler Nation wild rumor connecting the Steelers to JJ keeps on rolling with new speculation. Is that coming from AB's report? Antonio Brown CTESPN network. Is it coming from some other source? 
Uh, the picture they use makes me think this isn't even serious. But I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't have any answers. I wish I did. I wish there was something concrete, but there's not. There's only the mere fact that from a logical perspective, the Vikings are rebuilding. From a logical perspective, the Arizona Cardinals probably are listening. And from a logical perspective, the one team, the Steelers make some sense in, in a way. And I've even heard rumors that Fields and first rounder, let's call it whatever, get sent to the Minnesota Vikings for JJ. So if, if you were to send a, a pick and future first rounders, whatever, and Justin Fields to the Minnesota Vikings. Those are just total speculative pieces that have no evidence whatsoever. But like they make sense in some to some degree. <laughs> they just got Fields, but good God, what a way to turn that. That's not gonna happen. That, that's just that's something I thought was very interesting. And I would I would definitely <laughs> I definitely love to see something crazy happen. Um, but the Cardinals make the most sense because the four pick gives them a, a replica at a zero cost of entry, you know, rookie contract in Marvin Harrison Jr. Maybe a replica, maybe not. But I think Marvin Harrison Jr. feels to me like the most likely to become the next JJ. And you get to start over on the deal and you're already rebuilding. If they weren't rebuilding, if they weren't, and I know Aaron Jones kind of throws a little bit of a wrench in this because he's not a, a spring chicken, but maybe he's the veteran piece they want to help mold and sculpt the rookie quarterback, right? Protect them, throw to them. Uh, allow him to learn to check down to him. That, that feels like one, like one of his teachers. You know, Aaron Jones will be a, a, a guiding light for the rookie quarterback. But aside from that, Addison Young, rookie quarterback, incoming the Arizona Cardinals. There's at least something there, a, a little something there that makes a whole lot of sense. But for right now, I'm here to tell you, there is nothing concrete out there. There's nothing for sure of any kind. There's no validation of any of these reports and it's just a bunch of people throwing a bunch of mud at the wall and we are here to discuss it and break it down that, that's that's what i'm trying to do but uh we'll see you tomorrow from the fantasyfootballshow.com studios it's the fantasy football show